Joining us right now is Maya Kazazic. Did I pronounce the last name right? Yes, you did. That was perfect. Well, that, first time I've heard that in a long time, by the way. Uh, and thank you for that, Maya. You are an expert on anxiety and uh, depression. Uh, you, you, you speak, you, you counsel. But, you know, it, it seems like your calling to this life really started at a very young age because your story alone is uh, amazing. I'm going to let you tell us a little bit about where you came from and how you got to today. Well, thank you so much, first of all, for having me on, and I'd be happy to share. Uh, I'm originally from Bosnia, and uh, if uh, if you remember during the 90s, there was a, Bosnia was going through a really severe genocide during that time uh, that left 250,000 people killed and injured. During that time, my family and I were stuck with 60,000 other civilians uh, between two armies without any food, water, electricity, medicine, or outside contact. So we kind of struggled to survive. Um, during that period, after a while, you kind of, I was a teenager, you know, 16 years old, and you kind of get used to that lifestyle and you start hanging out outside a little bit. And I was hanging out in the courtyard of my building with five of my friends when the bomb exploded, killing all five of my friends, and I was severely injured. So that sort of set off, uh, huh. really made a huge change in my life and set off <laughs> yeah. the following course of my life, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, and everything kind of transpired from there to the point of kind of getting rescued, getting taken out of there, uh, uh, and getting the medical care that you needed, for goodness sakes, uh, and bringing you to a place you're at today. Absolutely. I mean, it was a, definitely the, one of the defining moments of my life that changed the course of my life. I was planning to be a professional athlete, but this essentially changed the course of my life. And, um, you know, after having uh, my leg amputated with anesthesia, after having over 100 surgeries and going and having to relearn how to walk again, relearn how to run again, uh, it took me actually 15 years to relearn how to run again and be able to get back to my life. I was hit with a heavy case of PTSD, which uh, forced me to deal with anxiety, depression, panic attacks, uh, claustrophobia, agoraphobia, and a bunch of other phobias that come along, that all these things that we don't talk about, which forced me essentially to become a uh, mental health expert. Does most d mental health, do most mental health issues come from something traumatic? Absolutely not. I mean, for me, it's so obvious that it's almost like a, I, I, feel, I feel almost like special because when you tell people, oh, I was blown up in a war and, and, and I got injured and, and I had my leg amputated and I had all these things happen to me, people are sort of understanding of, of sure. mental health issues. But unfortunately, uh, a, a majority of mental health issues is it's something gradual. I always tell people it's like having a glass of water, right? We start off young and, and our body is like having a glass of water and you know, it produces these chemicals. So every time something bad or negative happens to us, whether it's worry about, okay, are we going to go to the prom in high school? Are we going to have enough money to pay for college? Now you're getting married, your relationships. Each time we, something happens that's stressful, that's negative, fills this glass. So by the time we get to our 40s and our 50s, our glass is filled to the rim and something small might trigger it. You know, you might be in traffic or something minor might happen. Your boss might say something bad and, and this last drop overfills the glass and now we start having anxiety and panic sy symptoms and we think, oh my God, I'm such, a, I'm such a weak person. You know, my boss told me something bad and here I am having panic attacks. And the reality is it actually happened gradually over the years and our glass is overfilled and we need to take the time to empty the glass and take care of it. Yeah, I, I kind of likened it to using that my analogy and, and there you heard it is for me, it wasn't one thing. It was a straw that broke the camel's back. It, it, it was a culmination. And, uh, I, you know, then I had an event happen in my life and I tended to focus. Well, it obviously it was just this event, but it was only through counseling and years of it that I was like, OK, so there was a there was a lot leading up to that point. You know, this this, this didn't happen overnight. There were signs early on that just nobody picked up. But, you know, young people today, Maya, it strikes me, are maybe a little more in tune to the idea of mental health and its importance. I, I, I know that there's probably some people listening right now that roll their eyes at this and, and think it's some sort of hooey or whatnot. But even though young people are more attuned to it, we're still seeing some pretty tragic outcomes. Well, so 
we have been working for many years to remove that stigma of mental health issues to talk about it more because we need to talk about it more uh, over the years i have had so many people come up to me and say oh you have suffered so much with your leg leg issues amputation injuries but no one has come up to me and said oh, oh my god well, how was it for you to, to deal with ptsd anxiety but now it's becoming a lot more um, uh, common to talk about it which i think helps uh, younger individuals to recognize that there's an issue and talk about it. The problem that we still face is that we don't have support systems in place to actually help these young people. And that's where the issue is. And hopefully the next stage of this is actually building support systems in ways that we can actually allow young people to go in places to reach out for help. Mm. See, I find that uh, I'm shocked to hear that. There is still in this day and age, isn't enough support out there? In, in what way exactly? Well, you still have a lot of people who stigmatize mental health. The problem is a lot of people, even though they recognize the signs, they may still not, 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 don't know what to do. The second thing is they do not know where to turn to to actually get support. And all it takes, mental health is so fragile. All it takes is one person to say something wrong in order for you to kind of go down the spiral and not go ask for help not reach out and unfortunately uh you know it's it's such a crucial and fragile system that um, you know the kids don't know where to turn to, turn to and we know what happened in, in in north carolina with with a couple of students i mean that was really really tragic yeah i mean unc uh, and chapel hill actually canceled classes because two students committed suicide in a short period of time. And isn't that a, also a concern, Maya, that there, there, there's a contagion effect to that, that that when you have suicides like uh, certainly happen like that around young people, that, that I won't say it plants the seed, but again, that could just be another trigger for, for, for kids moving forward? I would imagine there is some some of that is triggering. Besides two suicides that happened in short period, they also had two more. Oh. Uh, however, they, they, so, so there was there were there were not actual suicide; they were attempted suicide. Got it. So that so that was really really shocking, and that's why they they stopped to recognize to allow people to kind of grieve and help each other and focus in, on mental health. But that can certainly be a trigger. You know, it's it's it, their life becomes so overwhelming, especially for students right now. University of Florida, uh, from uh, 2019 to 2020. So 106 percent increase in their visitation to their mental health clinic, 106 mm. percent, and then this year they saw an additional four percent. And that is in in two years, that is 110 percent increase. It, it's phenomenal. And one of the major things that students are suffering from is loneliness. Loneliness that has been the case due to social media in the oh, last yeah. 10 to 15 years. However, it has really increased with COVID. Yeah. So when you feel lonely, when you feel alone, you are reluctant to search for support and you don't know who to turn to and you just want to be done. And that's really, really triggering and very dangerous place to be. Maya, thank you for your time today. Uh, again, an amazing story in and of itself and uh, appreciate the work you're doing bringing, bringing hope to, uh, to people and, and talking about this. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Outstanding. She's Maya Kazizic, uh, an expert on anxiety and depression, expert on.